no, when I look at this debacle that has taken place in Afghanistan, it has me scratching my head. I mean, there was just so many mistakes, and these mistakes are going to cost a lot of lives and have long-lasting effects. I mean, do you think any future ally, hey, we're going to we're gonna protect you, is going to believe us when we abandon people? So I, I kind of can see this is going to be a problem for some uh, for a long period of time. Um, at the same time, I, you would think everything that has happened would have been easily cleared up, you know, through the process. I mean, as you're the last guy getting onto the plane to leave and you see all that equipment, wouldn't you think you might go, hey, Captain, um, are we supposed to leave this equipment? And then the Captain go, oh, that's a good point. I mean, this is a lot of guns. The enemy's going to get a hold of it. And, and that's you know, not exactly military uh, uh, what the military does. We're supposed to destroy our stuff, not abandon it. Let me contact the general. And the general contacts his general that's above him or whatnot, the head general. And then he contacts the president. So you would think this would have been something easily preventable. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of two log trucks passing each other on the highway. You know, you think a phone call, go, hey, you need logs down there. I got logs down here. Let's have some fuel, you know, kind of thing. Uh, that was actually part of a, an old stand-up joke. Um, but it, 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 it just seems like it would be something very preventable in the end. But it, it, it didn't. Uh, and it's like everything in here, preventable, and it just wasn't prevented. Nobody messed up. So, I mean, Biden has a lot to, the, uh, a lot of the blame does go on him. But so does everybody else for not questioning it as it was happening. At the same time, you know, I, I'm looking back and trying to, you know, go through this and you got like President Trump had some deal that went on and it was like, hey, you stay out of the cities uh, and, and all this stuff. This will go good and we uh, and you won't be bombed to the Stone Age kind of thing. And he was still the pr help would still be provided for the Afghan people and the government so they could fight them. And then Biden's like, nope. And this was against I, I guess we're hearing it against. Uh, advice from his advisors and he said no just just get the hell out of there stop helping you know so he, it so they would end up leaving there was no you know they'd be right down we need bombs hello nobody there they're coming this way could you could you bomb them they were they were trained to work with our support and we l took away their support there's even some uh some people talking about how they uh, the Afghans were even trying to get equipment working, you know, and repairs and stuff, and they ended up trying to use Skype to do this. So, yeah, they, they kind of were forced into a situation. What do we do? We, we can't use the equipment. We can't use the way we were trained. We're, we're screwed. Help us, you know. And so they're like, okay, maybe we should just run. <laughs> what else do we have? We don't have any allies. We don't know what to do. So, I mean, it, it it's kind of crazy. It, it It's like, this was such a mistake that just doesn't make sense. It's so huge. And, and I mean, this is going to cause a lot of damage. I mean, the damage just right now that's being caused is big. I mean, we've already lost several people uh, uh, just, you know, because of the explosion, uh, the terrorist attacks outside the airport that's happening. Uh, Afghans have died, fallen from airplanes. Um, there's estimated like 10,000, 15,000 people who are working in, a in Afghan uh, that actually were Americans. Uh, at least that's what they're reporting. But then they have their family, so there's like it could be as high uh, in the end as a, a number, mind-boggling number of 100,000 people. The Afghan, the the Taliban, they're gonna find these people and go after them. And they're gonna have the ability to do so not just them but our allies the people who helped us we literally handed them the names it's like again i have a hard time grasping such a huge mistake i mean this isn't like a doctor who messed up in a hospital and killed a patient that's bad this this is something else and there's really no there's really no comparison, really. I mean, people say Saigon, but I, I don't know if that's exactly equivalent. I mean, I, I suppose I, I don't remember history in that area. I don't know if we left them $85 billion worth of equipment. I mean, I suppose we did leave equipment that they found and used. 
but I don't think it's the equivalent. Um, and we left the allies to die. So I guess it is. I mean, it, it is comparable. <laughs> but uh, this whole thing, I mean, I mean, Biden said the buck stops here. If he recognizes the mistake he made and this epic mistake and the buck stops with him, then you would think he would have a responsibility to stand down because he realized I'm not fit to be the president. And, and really, when you look at all the mistakes he's made prior to this, it's like, yeah, this this guy shouldn't be president. Now, I'm not saying put Trump in, you know, I don't think he was a good president either. Mediocre at best, but he didn't make these kind of mistakes. He made mistakes, but nothing like like Biden. This this is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, how, how do you how do you save this situation, too, is what I'm trying to think about. How, how would anybody if I was thrusted into presidency? How would I do it? Would I go back in? I suppose that would be the only real option, really. But this that would take lives of soldiers. And the Americans that are already behind line, the Taliban would still be hunting down and killing anyways. Um, so how do you do it? Do you pay the Taliban? It, it, it's like, this is a lot of damage. This is, it, it's mind-numbingly epic. And again the the effects that it's going to have for allies and, and not just here but in the future like imagine china right now and i guess china is trying to use this like hey taiwan look what they do to their allies they abandon them you, you know if we attack there's a good chance they're going to abandon you i mean it's already looking like they may not be able to really put on a very good fight without really taking you know a ton of damage and America doesn't seem to really be willing to do that anymore. I mean, a few deaths and they're like, well, let's leave, let's get out of there, kind of attitude starts, you know. Uh, so why don't you just start adhering to the things you want? Let's put people in there and eventually you join us and it becomes nonviolent and we take control. And, <laughs> and, and they'll do that. They're already starting to go in Af uh, They're already making deals in uh, Afghanistan to, uh, with the Taliban to get out the materials that are needed. And they're wanting, and they're starting to go to Africa and all these countries that are going to give them a lot of power. Imagine they start having those powers. They have now Taiwan. They have all the uh, all the minerals. You know, most of the places that have most of the supplies that U.S. now uses, except for maybe our key allies, and they'll be able to go. Okay, America, uh, we now have all the control here. So you do what we say and don't criticize us. You criticize us. We'll turn off your uh, your supply to your microchips. Uh, we're, we'll turn off your supply to the antibiotics. Um, uh, uh, or we'll just completely put in an embargo and all our allies and all our friends will do the same and you're screwed and we're treating you the way you treated the world. <laughs> Which kind of gives you an idea maybe we should be treating people a little better. Um, but they would be able to soon do that. I mean, we may have moved up that timeline because it seems inevitable at this point uh, unless there's something happens. I mean, there's always could be something that takes place. I mean, uh, there's a huge housing bubble that's taking place over there that could pop and stop them. But at this point with their expansion, we may have helped move up their timeline and help just hand them a lot more power in the end. And so we may... Biden may have done more damage now uh, in the long term than he has now, and we just don't see the effects yet. And this is kind of scary. I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, uh, climate change, yes, climate change is real, but climate change takes place, and you know now you have you know all these uh, supplies that are going low, you know, food shortages and stuff, and America's already in debt. And, I mean, we're going to have a hard time as things go on. Just even if nothing happens with China and everything's perfectly kosher with them uh, and we can keep our regular relations, it's going to be hard. But now this is going to be harder. We just help, you know, make people not want to trust us. We made people even less afraid. Our enemies are right now laughing at us. They're not as afraid. They're like, yeah, America? Yeah, we just have to fight long enough and they go away. And really... 
maybe we shouldn't be fighting them at all. I mean, uh, we shouldn't have gone into Afghanistan in the first place. Uh, that was a huge mistake. Um, and now we have, uh, now that we're here, we have a responsibility. I mean, there are women and children and people in there that have grown up not underneath the Taliban's control. They don't know what it's like. They've heard the stories. They're scared of what could happen. Uh, but they haven't lived under it. And we gave them hope. Uh, and that's the worst part. We gave them hope. And now we just pulled the rug out of that. And now they're like, oh shit, we're screwed. And <laughs> and the rest, again, the rest of the world's gonna look at this and, and there's, there's not gonna be a lot of trust. I, if I was in charge of another country, I wouldn't trust America. I would be like, screw you. <laughs> I just don't have enough trust in you. I don't. I can't rely on you. That's clear. You you just made it clear. Even if, if it's in there, I mean, you you messed up Afghanistan's. You abandoned the Kurds. Um, I mean, you, you've you pretty much screwed everything. Good luck, though. You know, a. But I, I think I'm gonna play nice now, so that it, that you know I don't make an enemy of the new superpower, who's uh, you know doesn't like you so let me just weigh my odds and I'm gonna go with them okay so again uh, this is a, a, a huge debacle I don't see how we're gonna solve this um, I don't think it's really solvable I think we're gonna have to you know bite the bullet on this one and I think we're gonna have a very long impact that's going to take place maybe multiple generations one maybe two generations it might still be felt and that if the buck stops with him then he is the blame for this and he's going to be remembered negatively for this